What's up guys, today we're going to talk to you about the K-Tech Whistler compression ratio tester, what it is, how it works, and how you can use it on your engine. The Whistler is a tool for measuring the compression ratio of an engine without costly teardown and volume measurements. The Whistler was developed by K-Tech in the 1980s and is used by sanctioning bodies such as NASCAR and SCCA, as well as engine builders and enthusiasts. So let's take a closer look. First, we'll learn how the Whistler measures compression ratio, and then we'll learn how to operate it on an engine. So how does it work? The whistler is basically a musical instrument. It blows air through the combustion chamber and out a whistle. It uses a microphone in the unit to measure the tone of that whistle, and the tone of the whistle changes based on the volume of the chamber. It uses that information as well as some other inputs to calculate the static compression ratio. The whistler is accurate to one-tenth of a compression point. So what information do you need to know about your engine to make a compression ratio measurement? You're going to need to know the total engine displacement, the number of cylinders, and the temperature in the chamber. What size engines can a Whistler measure? The Whistler tool can measure between 6 and 600 cubic inches for 4, 6, and 8 cylinder engines. However, you can also measure other engines with some simple math. 1, 2, 10, or 12 cylinder engines can also be measured by making the Whistler believe it's measuring a 4, 6, or 8 cylinder engine. For example, if you can measure a 12 cylinder engine that is 400 cubic inches by telling the Whistler that you're measuring a 200 cubic inch six cylinder. Or you can measure a 100 cubic inch V twin by telling the Whistler you're measuring a 200 cubic inch four cylinder, and so on. The Whistler is made up of the Whistler unit, the whistle assembly with tubing, a power source, a calibration checking bottle, and five spark plug adapters. The tools required to whistle an engine are a spark plug socket, a blow gun, and a wrench to turn over the engine. You also need a compressed air source. Shop air at 90 psi is acceptable. To connect the whistle assembly and tubing to the whistler unit, connect the Tigon tubing to the ports on the front of the whistler, making sure that the tube with the black indicator matches up to the connection point on the whistler with the black indicator. One of these tubes is the air source to the whistle, the other one is a listening tube to the microphone. To prepare an engine to be whistled, place the whistler on a flat level surface. On your engine, remove one spark plug. We already have done that here on our demonstration engine. Once the spark plug is removed, you want to blow compressed air through the chamber to purge any gasoline vapors that may be remaining in the chamber. It's important to purge fuel vapors from the combustion chamber because fuel vapors will skew the reading of the whistler. We're often asked if you can use different compressed gases to whistle an engine rather than shop air, which you cannot because different gases will whistle at a different tone. If you can think of your voice on helium, it's the same concept. Next, select the correct spark plug adapter for your engine and thread it into the spark plug hole. Now you're ready to whistle the engine. We can turn the power onto our whistler. The display will read all eights for a moment and then it will default to 350 cubic inches as long as the center switch is in the middle. Use the toggle switch to set the number of cylinders, so in this case it's in the up position to the eight cylinder setting. Use the toggle switch on the right to set the displacement of the engine, in this case 416 cubic inches. Next we will set the temperature, move the center toggle switch to the down position to set temperature, and in this case we're whistling an engine on a stand in our engine build department, so we're going to go with the ambient temperature in the room. If you're whistling an engine that's in a vehicle, you can either take a temperature measurement of the air inside the combustion chamber with a thermometer, or you can go by the coolant temperature. If you're taking a temperature measurement of the combustion chamber, make sure to use a thermometer rather than an infrared pyrometer because the surface temperature may be different than the air temperature inside the combustion chamber. Next, plug in the air supply to the Whistler. Adjust the airflow on the flow meter so that the check ball is at the 20 SCFH mark. Adjustments are made using the regulator knobs. The bottom knob is a coarse adjustment and the top smaller knob is a fine adjustment. Adjust it so the ball is directly 
in the center of the line at 20 SCFH. The flow meter must always be at 20 SCFH to get an accurate reading. Next, insert the whistle tube into the spark plug adapter. Make sure your lines are straight and not kinked. And make sure the tube is completely inserted into the spark plug adapter. Now to switch to measuring compression ratio, we're going to change the center toggle switch to the up position to display compression ratio. Next, we want to turn the engine over so it's on the compression stroke. We can do this by watching the whistler, and as soon as the compression ratio starts to increase, we know we're on the compression stroke, and we can keep turning the engine over until we get our highest reading. Now the engine's been whistled, the result is a static compression ratio of 10.5 to 1. Okay, so let's talk about troubleshooting. What if you're getting low, erratic, or no reading on the whistler? First, the combustion chamber may not be completely sealed due to a bent valve or damaged piston. To test for this, perform a leak down test. Second, airflow through the whistle may be obstructed. This could be due to a kinked hose, debris in the back of the whistle, or an engine design that prevents airflow from exiting the back of the whistle. Some dual overhead cam engines can be whistled if the whistle assembly fits all the way down into the spark plug tube. Some engines with longer spark plug tubes may have obstructions and can't be whistled. Third, there could be background noise interfering with the microphone on the whistle assembly. There's a microphone inside the whistler, and the tone of the whistle is sent via the listening tube, which acts like a stethoscope. Fourth, airflow from the compressed air source may be inconsistent. Check the flow meter for 20 SCFH. Fifth, it's also possible that the regulator was set too high and compressed air blew the hose off the back of the regulator. To fix this, remove the four screws from the faceplate and reattach the hose on the back of the regulator. Finally, a few thoughts on calibration. The Whistler can only be calibrated here at KTEC, but you can use the checking bottle to verify that your unit is in calibration. The provided calibration checking bottle simulates a known combustion chamber volume. Each bottle is unique to the Whistler, so it needs to stay with that particular Whistler. To verify the calibration, follow the same steps as when whistling an engine. Connect the compressed air source. Set the number of cylinders to eight. Displacement to 350 cubic inches. The temperature to the ambient temperature in the room. Move the center switch back to the up position for compression ratio. Insert the whistle tube into the calibration checking bottle and set it on your workbench. You don't want to hold the whistle assembly in your hand because the heat from your hand will skew the reading. Double check your airflow, make sure it's at 20 SCFH. We're showing a compression ratio reading of between 12.7 and 12.8. This bottle is marked 12.7-12.8, so we know that this whistler is in calibration. If your whistler is displaying a compression ratio reading that is not matching the bottle, do not adjust the airflow to make it read the correct amount. Your whistler does need calibration. To send in your whistler for calibration, download the form on our website, fill it out, and send it back in with the whistler. So the whistler is a simple and relatively affordable way to check the compression ratio of your engine, and it's only available from KTEC. To order, go to ktechengines.com.